Our top story is on tonight's newscast. Peacemaker stopped to death after intervening in an argument between siblings. Second protocol signed at Cotet to advance trade and economic relations with Cuba. Call by protesters for King and Chase Green to be fired heightens. And in court, Martica boat operator remanded for allegedly trafficking four Venezuelan nationals. To begin tonight's newscast, we tell you that a peacemaker has met his demise tragically after he intervened in an argument between two men. The man tried to quell the argument between the two brothers, but he was repaid with a stab to his chest. Find out more on this, Nikhil John to report. The suspect was taken into custody, subsequent to him stabbing to death 27-year-old Hafiz Douglas. The incident took place at Christiana Street, North Rumfeld, Georgetown. The police's investigation has revealed that Douglas was attempting to resolve an argument between two men. However, as Douglas was making peace, he was tapped to his left side chest with an improvised weapon. Douglas immediately collapsed to the ground. The police said the man was examined by an emergency technician attached to Central Fire Station who pronounced him dead. Speaking to this newscast, brother of the deceased, Tion Herod said he was heading home from work when he was told by persons in the area that his brother was stabbed to death. The young man told this media outlet that two brothers were fighting at last entrance, North Rumfeld, when Douglas tried to make peace with the other two men. Nobody can't really tell me if so I go to part, this accident happen. And when I find it, when I hear that he was part in a fight, and the other guy pick up a joker, and why is he holding the other guy? The guy stabbed him and he fell over and he got a knock Who were the guys that were involved in the fight? Mm, two brothers. Two brothers were fighting. Yeah. And your brother tried to part Party the fight. Party to them, yeah. Douglas's corpse is at the Lycan funeral home awaiting a post-mortem examination. The suspect is assisting investigators. Nikhil Jondo reporting for MTV News Update. The 44th Ministerial Meeting of the Council for Trade and Economic Development saw the second signing of the protocol to the Trade and Economic Cooperation Agreement. This is expected to advance trade relations between CARICOM and Cuba. The meeting will see the reviewing of the free movement of regional goods and services under the CARICOM Single Market and Economy Initiative. Secretary General of CARICOM Orwin LaRocque said the region must prepare for the next catastrophic event. As such, the region should become more resilient to climate change, LaRocque affirmed. CARICOM will also be seeking the United Nations support following the destruction by hurricanes Irma and Maria. In closing, closing on ministers, I wish again to emphasize the important role you play in fostering the region's economic development. In this era of new normal, forced upon us by the effects of climate change, all our councils have a responsibility to ensure that our community can respond fully and effectively to the challenges posed. On the international front, discussions will be pursued to ensure there is no interruption of trade in the region following Britain's exit from the European Union. The conference also saw the signing of the second protocol to the Trade and Economic Cooperation Agreement. The agreement would serve to instill in the CARICOM private sector an urgency to access the Cuban market in advancing its trade and economic relationship. This marks a further deepening of the trade and economic relations between CARICOM and Cuba. It provides further opportunities for our private sector, some of whose representatives have been actively engaged with our Cuban partners. CARICOM and the Republic of Cuba have shared fraternal relations, which were forged since the establishment of diplomatic relations more than four decades ago. According to Minister of Communities Ronald Wilkan, the Mayor and City Council has formally requested assistance with clearing outstanding arrears to Poorin Brothers and Sivon's Waste Management for garbage collection made over a period of time. Wilkan explained that the proposal was placed before central government, which is currently being considered. Minister Wilkan explained that his ministry has been lending support to municipal bodies over time. In July, the two waste disposal companies withdrew their services from the MNCC after being owed in excess of $300 million for services rendered. 
Still on City Hall's blotter, the call for the town clerk and the city mayor to be fired heightens as protesters took to the streets in front of City Hall yet again. This follows the allegations of sexual abuse against a minor, allegedly by a city constable. Here's Yannis Abrams. Several persons held a picketing exercise in front of the Georgetown Stone Council over the allegations of sexual assault by a city constable. One protester, Don Singh, said the town clerk, Royston King, should be fired. The protester affirmed that not only the town clerk, but also the mayor, Patricia Chase Green, should be taken out of office. We are saying that the mayor, the town clerk, the chairman of the Legal Affairs Committee should be arrested as accessories after the fact and the police should do their due diligence. It is ridiculous. We can't have in, our, uh, in, in, um, in City Hall rape occurring and then our oh, investigation, they sit on it for two months, two months. Well, because the child is poor, because it's a street child, what is it? Where are we going with this? Singh, who is disheartened by the statement made by former Deputy Mayor Sherrod Duncan, took time out to respond. A child was raped. How is that? And you say some misjudgment. Oh, I didn't know what to do. May, you know, maybe this, at the end of all this, we can have a, a, a set of procedures, a set of rules where rape occurs. This is what you do. You call the police. You call, you call child care protection. Agencies. You call... There must be, it just can't be ad hoc, it's insanity. A 15-year-old boy was reportedly sexually assaulted at the city police's Regent Street outpost. The accused and the officer that witnessed the alleged act were dismissed by the town clerk on October 17. The chairman of the Legal Affairs and Security Committee, Sheryl Duncan, town clerk Rice and King, and Mayor Chase Green were all brought under scrutiny with how the case was being handled. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Several questions are being asked by opposition member Anna Nadlal following the alleged revelation of a new secretary to the cabinet. However, the government is yet to clarify. Find out more in this report. Opposition member Anil Nadlal is challenging the coalition government on its alleged random selection of his secretary to the cabinet. The opposition member claims that Minister of State Joseph Herman was the secretary to the cabinet. However, that post was handed over to a party member, Edward Prasico. In a photograph posted on social media by Nanlal, the alleged secretary to the cabinet signed a document on October 24, 2017. And why is this information not made public? Is the public not entitled to such information? Secretary to the Cabinet is a constitutional position. That means that the office holder and the appointment of that office holder are all public. He's a public officer, and therefore the public is entitled to know why the previous office holder was removed, uh, whether the, this current office holder is he qualified for the position? Why was the previous one removed? And what are the terms and conditions and remuneration package of the current holder? And importantly, why are these information not available to the public? Though we have had several cabinet, post-cabinet briefings since this appointment was apparently made, these are not information that the transparent government would keep away from the public. Calls to Minister of State Joseph Harmon and Prime Minister Moses Nagamoto to clarify the appointment went unanswered. Article 117 of the Constitution of Guyana states that the Secretary to the Cabinet shall be a public office. That person shall have charge of the Cabinet office and shall be responsible in accordance with such instructions as may be given to him by the President for arranging the business for and keeping minutes of the cabinet and for conveying the decisions of the cabinet to the appropriate person or authority and shall have such other functions as the president may direct. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. More news till ahead, stay true.
is Annie Bina. She's a clothing designer, and she really enjoys her work. She also likes to hang out with her friends. However, a life-changing event is about to occur. The mosquito that bit Annie Bina is infected with a tiny worm that causes lymphatic filariasis, also known as filaria. But what is filaria? Filaria is a disease that affects a person's lymphatic system, causing some body parts such as their feet or breasts to swell and eventually remain in a swollen state that cannot go back to normal. Filaria shows no symptoms during the early years. Untreatable chronic symptoms can appear sometimes as late as 20 years after infection. Since there are no symptoms in the beginning, most infected persons do not know they're infected, like Anibina. When the symptoms begin to appear, it will be too late. Nothing will be able to make them disappear. Have you been bitten by a mosquito that transmits filaria? Are you sure that you've not been infected like Anibina? What can you do then, since you see no symptoms? Prevention is the best cure. A message from the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHO WHO. Introducing the new Softex toilet Softex tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Here's the Lut News Update. Welcome back. A night of culture was held to celebrate 45 years of diplomatic relations between Guyana and China. Prime Minister Moses Nagamoto says Guyana will continue its relationship with China, not only in politics but also in culture. Here's more from Nikhil Jondu. Guyana and China started bilateral relations back in 1972 to commemorate the two countries' relationship a night of cultural activities was held at the National Cultural Center. In attendance were Prime Minister Moses Nagamoto and his wife Sita Nagamoto, China's ambassador to Ghana Chu Jai Chan, former President Donald Ramatar and other dignitaries. China's ambassador to Ghana, Chu Jai Chan, said, countries around the world are concerned about Chinese development. He, however, assured that with U.S. President Donald Trump in China, it shows the kind of relationship that would reinforce development in the future. And I want to do more, much more for this country in a relationship, not only politics, not only economic, but culture is a very important aspect for, for us to cooperate. So this evening, thank you, Prime Minister, Acting President, for your time and to enjoy this great event. I do hope that we could find a lot of ways to build a relationship, not only for, from the politicians, but also I think that we can do it through, through the people, through the communication of all the people here. Prime Minister Moses Nagamoto told the audience that Ghana looks forward to China's bilateral relations, not only in politics but also in culture. On the basis of cultural exchanges, cultural exposure, that we have much to learn from the ancient rich culture of China and the Chinese people. On Monday, the Chinese government donated 2.6 million US dollars worth in vehicles and equipment to the government of Guyana. The vehicles and equipment have been handed over to the Guyana Police Force. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The High Court has found the best way out for the former Attorney General Anna Nadlal as no grounds was allowed for his claim of character defamation, says Attorney General Basil Williams. However, not pleased with the outcome of the matter, Nadlal will be filing an appeal. Find out more in this report. A $125 million lawsuit was filed by former Attorney General Anil Nandlal against his successor, Basil Williams. 
The case was filed on the grounds of defamation of character after Williams reported that Nadla stole several of the state's Commonwealth law books. However, the case was dismissed as a former Attorney General Nadlal failed to submit certain documents in a timely manner. It is against this backdrop that Attorney General Basil Williams had this to say. I know there was an, a, an application for an injunction and according to the rule, the court would employ a test really is whether you, you have prospects of success. And since the allegation was that I allegedly said he would be charged, uh, the, the learned judge, in fact, said he was charged. So the, the, there was no ground to award any injunction in the case. Noting that the learned lawyer does not have a case, Williams said the court decision was a better way out for Nadla rather than a withdrawal. Even if an appeal will be filed, Williams says prospects of success will have to be provided before the court entertains the appeal. Attorney at law Anil Nanlal was charged for fraudulently converting 15 Commonwealth law books to his own use and benefits in June this year. The Chedi Jagan International Airport executed its seventh emergency simulation exercise involving a plane crash. Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Annette Ferguson, says these emergency exercises are effective since it will give stakeholders a first time experience if a similar incident occurs. Here's Yanis Abrams. The Chetty Jagan International Airport held its first night emergency simulation exercise on November 8. Junior Minister Annette Ferguson said the emergency simulation is important since a plane crash can happen unexpectedly. Ferguson said all the stakeholders participated in the exercise and thinks it was well executed. Despite whatever time, what we have to do as a nation is to be prepared in order to show a positive response to the injured and those persons who were on board. On the seventh emergency simulation, which occurred at 18 hours 44, 50 persons were on board the plane and suffered various forms of injuries. In the exercise, there were two deaths. The minister also stated this will show what the necessary officials need to do in the instance of a plane crash. So, this particular exercise, as I said before, it is beneficial, right? So that at least we can see where our strengths and weaknesses are. So it would, it would enable us now to go back to the drawing board, right? To see exactly when it comes to the evacuation of the injured, you know, how readily are we when it comes to the injured being um, attended to? How readily are we? Because when I got here this evening, what I saw, even though it's not the reality, but what I saw is that you had the injured lying there for a couple of minutes well, awaiting the arrival of an ambulance. For the first time, CJIA executed a river transport mechanism in collaboration with the Maritime Department of the Guiana Defense Force. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Coming up, Child Care and Protection Agency deepened the fight against child neglect. And Hackathon 2017 launched under the team Hack to the Future. So you're going to be a top executive. You're looking into possible careers. You're going to the university. Your parents are proud of your success. The journey begins here. Enroll your child now at the business school and let us help develop their knowledge and confidence to achieve their full potential. The Business School, educating tomorrow's leaders. Shop early for Christmas and save big at Sino Mall. Shop now and get 50% off large decorated flowers. Was $5,000. Now, two for $5,000 in various designs. Get bouquets or save 50% off curtains. Was $2,000. Now, $1,000. Shop vases and a variety of wall pictures. Get blankets that you're sure to love. Deep bus 
far. Call now at 231-8200 or 617-6088. Happy Holidays! season. Gafus is making it special for its valued customers. Every $50,000 you spend in our store earns you an entry into our holiday promotion. Join takes place every two weeks beginning November 11th and customers have a chance to win. One of four 12,000 BTU air conditioner units, one of four barbecue grills, and one of four 2700 watt generators. And there are 20 consolation prizes. This promotion is extended to all branches. So make your holiday season special by shopping at Gafus. Condition supply. So see press for more details. Gafu's, the name you can trust. While the Child Care and Protection Agency has repeatedly been handling dozens of cases of child neglect, the agency has made a stern admonishment to all parents. Director of the CCPA, Anne Green, says the health and safety of children must be parents' priority. Here's more from the Gomes, Cornelius. According to the director of the Child Care and Protection Agency, Anne Green, the agency has been steadily receiving reports of young children being left at home unattended. Green noted that the issue most times calls for serious intervention on the part of parents with the assistance of the CCPA. It's a, a serious neglect because they're extremely vulnerable. Things could happen. You understand? A child should not be left alone without supervision. You're going to, you got to get, you got to get care. Mm -hmm. Somebody responsible while you're at work that say that you're going to look over these children for me. Mm -hmm. But they cannot be left alone even and saying that you're running out to work. We know how important work is. Yes, you have to go to work to get money so that you can see them. But you still cannot um, put them at that extreme risk. Moreover... Green explained for those parents or guardians who have been summoned by the agency, if they fail to properly follow the agency's advice and protocol, measures can be put in place to have those parents be brought before the court of law. We don't just readily rush to take you there. If you're willing to work with us okay. so that we could fix the situation, right? we will work with you. But if we're working with you and you, it's a repeated thing, yes, we might got to take you to the courts just to get you to understand that this is a this is serious. But it's not when we go the first time we'll do that. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. The Ministry of Public Telecommunications will be hosting the 2017 Hackathon under the team Hack to the Future. Information and Communication Technology Advisor Lance Hines says the participants will be given 48 hours to create the masterpiece. Yanis Abrams with the details. The Ministry of Public Telecommunications will be hosting their annual hackathon competition on November 17 through 19. Information and Communication Technology Advisor Lance Hines said this year's competition will be different since the Ministry will be inviting the public to state what the app should be. Hines also mentioned specialists will be judging the participants on their creation. Once we select the product or products that um, we're going to ask them to develop, we want to get a subject matter specialist from the, um, from the respective agency. And what we will ask them to do is give us about an hour so they can sit down and explain how this thing works from their perspective. I mean, we have the analysis skills and so on, and we could give you instructions based on design and some of the things that we'd like to see. But certainly, we want to have somebody who is in the field who could give us an idea of the sort of information that they're collecting, the kind of reports that they do, and some of the processes that they do on a daily basis, and that will feed into the application that's there. Hines stated it will be on the first come, first serves basis since they are looking for 12 teams of four. He further went on to say the ministry will continue to work with the winners of the competition. Once they're done, we see how far we can take it in terms of bringing that product to market uh, in any way, whether the agency that finds it useful buys it 
or whether there is a way that the developers can monetize that product in partnership with, um, with other stakeholders um, in their respective sectors. The Ministry of Public Telecommunications will use the hackathon to showcase talent to potential employees and investors. The Ministry has a mandate to create an enabling environment for the growth of ICT for national advancement. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. The policewoman, who was shot multiple times on Tuesday night, has regained consciousness. She is a victim of the brutal attack that a now dead police constable unleashed. Here is Nikhil Jordan. Mother of injured police constable Renita Hudson said her daughter is recovering. The woman said Constable Fraser has regained consciousness, however she is unable to speak. Constable Shanice Fraser was shot several times by her fiancé, Police Constable Clement Cockfield. The couple had an argument on Tuesday night when Cockfield ended the confrontation and mortally wounded himself. The incident took place at the Lagrange Police Station. Initial investigation has revealed that Constable Cockfield had collected a .38 service revolver with six live rungs. The police said Fraser was shot multiple times to her upper body while Cockfield shot himself to the head. He was pronounced dead on arrival at the West Demerara Regional Hospital. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. More news ahead, stay tuned. Optical service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens. Available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professional. Coca Royal introduces the coconut milk drink in six tantalizing flavors. Enjoy coconut milk in chocolate, mocha, banana, melon, mango, and the original. Just 140 calories to go and lactose free. How can you go wrong? Coconut milk is rich in vitamin C, E, minerals, iron, and calcium. Coca Royal Coconut Milk Drink. Cheers, because you deserve the finest in life. Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Me so much in this store, guys. Me Pio's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit? No, me know the secret. I like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody know the secret. <laughs> You're tuned to News Update. Welcome back. A number of discrepancies have been unearthed from the Auditor General's Special Report on the Purchasing of Items for the Ghana Elections Commission. 
It was revealed by Auditor General Diodat Sharma that contracts were awarded to the highest bidder on three occasions. Three special investigations were conducted on the purchasing of radios, nippers, toners and cartridges for the Guyana Elections Commission. According to the report, 45 radio sets valued about $89 million were not utilized by GCOM, while six radio sets valued $11 million were inoperable as of September 2016. The findings in the Audit General's report also reveal that a restrictive method of procurement was used for the purchasing of toners where contracts were awarded to the highest bidder in three instances. Had these contracts been awarded to the lowest bidder, the Commission would have saved about $18 million, the report stated. Some $428,000 was underpaid to a supplier for nippers provided to the Commission. The Auditor General, Diodat Sharma, handed over the report to the Guyana Elections Commission in September. Leodat stated he'll be taking action via the police force if the report is left sold at the commission. The University of Guyana Workers' Union and the University of Guyana Senior Staff Association with the assistance of the Guyana Trade Union Congress officially signed an agreement that will enable the staff of the university to be paid their 8% increase. Lashan gomes Kernilis tells us more. In what is seen as a step in the right direction, the University of Guyana, with support from the Guyana Trade Union Congress, was able to free some hostages held by the university's administration in the prolonged wages and salaries negotiations. Both the University of Guyana Workers' Union and the University of Guyana Senior Staff Association, in collaboration with the administration, signed the agreement which opens the pathway for an 8% salary increase for all senior staff staff at both the Turkine and Dane campuses. After much deliberation with the administration, it was decided that the academic staff of the university will be paid a 6% increase in their salaries, dating back from the first quarter of 2017. However, all university lecturers will have to wait out the period until they are eligible for their back payments since the unions continue to reject efforts by the administration to include performance as one of the conditions for the increases. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. During the month of November, the Foster Care Division of the Child Care and Protection Agency will be continuing its effort in bringing forward awareness of the issue of foster care in Guyana. The Foster Care Unit is currently conducting community outreaches, encouraging individuals to become foster parents. Here again is Lashana Gomes, Cornelius. The month of November has been specifically set aside to help bring awareness to foster care. According to the probation and social services officer attached to the Child Care and Protection Agency, Monique Musa, the challenges of being a foster parent, though great, should not be a deterrent to persons who may genuinely want to help a child in need of a safe home and environment. While foster care is known as a temporary home placement provision for children who would have gone through some sort of abuse within their biological home circle, Musa indicated that one challenge which most times affects the foster child is the attachment which grows between a foster child and his or her foster parent. Uh, in terms of having persons becoming foster parents, the only obstacle I could say the agency thus far has identified is the detachment. The, because remember foster care it is temporary, it's not permanent. So the issue is when they have these children into their care, a lot of persons think, oh what about when you have to take them back, you know, it's going to be hard for us. So, you know, we try to combat that by always, you know, always re keep, you know, keep reminding them it is temporary care. Eventually, we're going to return these children if the family does not get their acts together. I mean, foster care can move to adoption and they can keep these children forevermore. But the ultimate goal is to reintegrate these children with their biological family. Manager of the foster care unit, Colleen Khan, said the agency would like to see a total eradication of the causes for foster care. On the other hand, she noted that many children in homes across Guyana are in need of a safer and more supportive home environment due to the various forms of abuse or neglect meted out to them. That a lot of work um, is being put into supporting families. Um, in a, in a variety of ways, but 
still sometimes um, in order to ensure that the child is not um, being harmed, they do need to be removed from their biological families or families of origin and they need to be placed in a setting just temporarily. So I know we would love if we could, you know, il il al alleviate violence against children and, and um, abuse against children, but um, we probably still have some way to go. And in the interim, foster care does act as, uh, fills this gap um, to ensure that a child gets to grow up in a, in a family-based setting. As Khan also added that several more community outreaches will be conducted during the remainder of November and how persons can play an integral role in fostering a child. On November 25, the CCPA Foster Care Unit will be hosting a fair at the YMCA ground in Georgetown. The unit encourages anyone interested in becoming a foster parent to take the first necessary step in contacting them at their head office at Broad and Charles Street, Charlestown. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Stay tuned for regional and international news, court roundup, as well as the Guyana Stock Exchange. At Gaffors, we've been manufacturing PVC pipes and fittings for more than 35 years. Over this time, we've been able to perfect plastic manufacture and now have in our employ a plastic technician trained in the USA with a master's degree and more than 30 years experience. Our products are quality certified by the Bureau of Standards. So for all your PVC pipes and PVC fitting needs, Consult our plastic expert, Mr. Indianas. He will advise you on the type of pipes for specific purposes, while his experience will guide you on the various types of fittings you will need for connections. He can also advise you on water tanks of superior quality along with PVC gutters and fittings. For superior customer service, superior quality and competitive prices, it's Gaffoo's, the name you can trust. spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick fit for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket a day could make you rich today. Are you running out of ideas of what gift to buy? Scared of getting the wrong size or color or something they already have? Why not try a gift certificate from John Lewis Styles? Available in any dollar value and can be used towards clothing, shoes, and accessories. Let the person choose exactly what they want and they'll definitely be happy. Gift certificates can also be used as employee bonuses, sales incentives, and office gift exchanges. So try our gift certificates today. John Lewis Styles, simply different. This is what went down at a George Young Magistrate scored. A 29-year-old logger from Sophia was brought before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan, charged with two robbery-related offenses. Glendale denied that on November 5 at Kitty, Georgetown, while being in the company of others and armed with knives, he robbed the Edward Lane of a cell phone valued at $70,000, along with $100,000 cash. They further denied that on September 9 at Kitty, he robbed the one Monroe, of a gold chain and a wallet valued $120,000. 
the unrepresented man told the court that he has been wrongfully charged. They stressed that when Lane was robbed at Kitty Seawall, he witnessed the ordeal. He added that two men robbed Lane and ran past him, but the police arrested him instead. Police prosecutor Arvin Moore objected to the accused being released on bail on the ground of the seriousness of the charge. Nevertheless, the chief magistrate overruled the prosecution's objection and released the day on $60,000 bail. The matter is adjourned until November 17. Meanwhile, a Kanta truck driver was on Thursday charged for the death of 71-year-old Chitraka Sankar, who was struck down and killed in an accident along the Houston East Bank Demarara Access Road in August. Lennox Williams of Golden Grove Housing Scheme East Bank Demarara appeared before Chief Magistrate Ann McLennan and denied that he, on August 10, at Houston Public Road, drove motor lorry GMM 6594 in a dangerous manner, which resulted in the death of Sankar. Police Prosecutor Arvin Moore made no objection to Williams being released on bail. The Chief Magistrate released the Williams on $700,000 bail and transferred the matter to Magistrate for Bail Azor for November 23. Finally, a Bartica boat operator was on Thursday charged and remanded to prison for trafficking four women who are Venezuelan nationals. Kenneth Simons appeared before Chief Magistrate Ann McLennan where the matter was held in camera. It is alleged that on November 3, at Komubak Dam, Bartica, Simons recruited, transported and harbored four women for the purpose of sexual exploitation. Simons denied the allegation and was remanded to prison until November 15. The matter is transferred to the Bartica Magistrate Court. Quatrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Again, stock exchange closing prices for trading session 746. Let's turn our attention to the Demar Harbour Bridge schedule. What do people say on this week's Hot Topic is next. Stay with us. I want to buy a blue chair for my mom because she likes it. And I'm going to get my daddy a big barbecue grill so he can cook some beef and chicken. A fridge for mom and a TV for dad. Santa, can you please spell my name correctly? Live healthier. Cook with canola and vegetable oil from Costco and Sam's Club, America's largest wholesale distributors. Same nutrition value as Wesson Oil. Get a case of six bottles of six pint canola oil for only $9,000. Members Mark Olive Oil also available. Imported and distributed by Isaac Investments. Available in all DSL branches and leading supermarkets countrywide. Isaac Investments, located on the third floor of the Regent Multiplex Mall, Regent and Wellington Streets. Telephone number 231-0142 or 231-0143. Eh eh, BB, is way going with so much Windex for clean windows? All them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi girl, mind your own business, I got big plans. But, BB, your house don't even have windows. Eh, hey, girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got windows? Yes, I know it ain't got windows. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home. It. 
Eccles, it named Beeson. Like you and a nothing girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind you business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. On this week's edition of What the People Say, Guyanese shared their views on the Rastafarian community calling on government to decriminalize marijuana up to 56 grams. Here is what the people had to say. Well, um, let, me, let, me, let me say first. The first thing I must say that government shouldn't say anything about, the, um, about marijuana. Number one, marijuana came from the earth. Chico cane, mango, everything from the earth. Why segregated? Why is this segregation? Because it's well, good, we're segregating it then. We'll put it into a program, whereas fines, you could work with so much. I don't think it's positive. I don't think we should do that, to be honest. Because smoking marijuana, your body got to, you got to eat it properly, you understand? Your mind got to be settled. And see what's going on with this use now. If you do the brother and get them done for smoke, it'll be more, more problem out here, being honest. Cannabis, if it's a way of life for um, one religious group, I think um, it needs to, um, to be considered. One, um, they, I think they need to you know, um, get a, a great um, perception um, around um, society that can view it more properly, at least um, got some kind of um, workshops. If, if there's the right way, if there's the right word, um, a community involvement is good. You cannot take away something from somebody that is, you know, that is useful to somebody, to, to them, right? And it's it's really um, a governmental issue how to, you know, to deal with something like that. Rastafari is a, um, is a is a is a is a a group that started a way of life that people choose it that you know they that, that they could follow. If uh, marijuana. Is um, is used within the, within the, the culture or, or within the the um, the way of life. Well, then I, I think it needs to be considered. Whether if it is one gram, two gram, fifty grams, eighty grams, right? It, it it's how they consume it, how they will use it, right? And I think I think that, that that's the, the best way to go. It's it, it's not that you should. Um, give a harsh penalty or, or take away something, as I already said, take away something from somebody that is useful for them. I think the government should not decriminalize, um, they should not decriminalize it. Can you elaborate a little on that? <laughs> they should not go with it. Why? Because it's destroying people, it's destroying lives, young people. If they go in, if the government do all right, legalize it, what do you think will happen to the young people of today um, tomorrow? Is that we all going to be a, a nation of drug? I have my, son, my grandsons and my daughters, and I don't want them to be involved in that. So it's not good. I don't think none at all. Why? I don't think so. It is not right. How about the medical use? No. You think it is it is used for, for medical use? I don't think so. Marijuana is dangerous. The positive um, things that we will look at, up to 56 grams, is to find um, what, it is, what, what it is useful for, what they use it for, when using it, when finish using it, what goods comes out of it. If it, is, if it is good for meditation, if it is good for prayers, if it's good for working, if it is good for creating 
you know, um, something new, right? And then the negative is, is to is to look upon your health. What is it, you know, how what it could do to your to your entire body, right? And the, I think I think that we should look upon that too. For MTV News Update, I'm Rajesh Schlacken. That's all we have for you in our newscast tonight. But before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Peacemaker stabbed to death after intervening in an argument between siblings. Second protocol signed at Cote to advance trade and economic relations with Cuba. Call by protesters for King and Chase Green to be fired heightens. And in court, Bartica boat operator remanded for allegedly trafficking four Venezuelan nationals. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be re-recasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours on Friday, November 10. On behalf of our news team, I'm Sandy Ramutar, thanking you for watching. Have a good night.